Hey everybody, Michael Park here for CreativeCow.net and welcome to my advanced glitter particle tutorial using Trapcode's particular plugin. Uh, if you'll see, this is what we'll be doing today. We've got some particles floating down uh, and if those of you who have watched my previous tutorial on glittering particles, you'll notice this looks very similar but for the fact that the particles are now rotating in 3D space. The reason why this is advanced is we're going to be uh, keyframing the rotation and then actually using expressions to drive the grayscale uh, of the particles based on their uh, orientation to the camera and then using that grayscale to give us the color values so that it actually appears as if they're, they're uh, shimmering when they uh, are looking at the camera. Well enough talking, let's get down to business here. And just so nobody thinks that I'm cheating, we're going to go ahead and delete all of this stuff and start from scratch. First thing you want to do is create a new composition. I'm going to create it uh, 200 by 200 by uh, let's see 23.976 frames per second. Five seconds is good. I'm going to name this layer or this comp shape and I'm going to turn on the title action safe. Select layer new solid make sure it is comp settings and it's black rename it particle select the pin tool we're gonna to make a mask here and we're gonna basically make an elongated hexagon you can make any shape you want squares look good snowflakes look good circles will work for purposes today I'm gonna to be making a elongated hexagon next we're gonna to go to effect generate fill and we're going to change this fill color to pure white. Okay, next thing we're going to do is come down here and we're going to keyframe the rotation in 3D space. Turn on the 3D layer, turn on the keyframes or the stopwatches for all three rotations, go to the end, and for X we're going to go 10. For Y we'll have six revolutions for five seconds and negative four and the Z. Now if we scroll through you'll see that we were getting some clipping here. Uh, the way to fix that is to go to the composition and extend it out by 50 pixels. Now obviously you could have just started with a 250 pixel uh, composition to begin with. The reason why I didn't is I wanted the title action safe to give me some uh, basically a grid within which to click my mask. So we can now turn off title action safe and now we get to the more advanced part of this which will be uh, basically generating a very large expression uh, to drive the color of this particle based on the rotation values so the next thing we need to do is create a new layer I'm going to create a new null object I'm going to name the uh, null object I'm going to name it uh, color slider for obvious reasons in a moment the next thing we're going to do is add effect expression control slider control now we're going to build our expression so let's alt click the slider control to bring up our expression windows and we'll talk a little bit of theory here what I basically want to do is pick whip the X rotation into the slider expression and I want to convert this uh, or the value here from degrees to radians so that uh, the a cosine function can read it properly. The reason why we're using a cosine function for those of you who flunked high school trigonometry is uh, the cosine function will return a value between 0 and 1 uh, based upon the radian or the degree uh, from uh, or the angle of the uh, let me start over. The, the reason why we're going to be using a cosine expression is that uh, the cosine expression will return a value between 0 to 1 uh, for all of the uh, angles between 0 and 360. So when the angle is 0, the cosine value is 1. When the angle is 90, it's 0. Uh, and at 180, it's 1. And at 270, it's 0. The reason why this is advantageous to us is when the angle is, uh, is 0, we want this to be a full value of white or 1. When it is 90 degrees or uh, perpendicular, 
or parallel to the camera, you don't want to see it, uh, and so it'll return a value of zero, which we're going to mask to dark. So we need to change the degrees to radians, and the function for that is simply enough. Degrees, capital two, capital radians. And we want to put parentheses around this because we're going to be adding another expression, which will be our math dot sign. And we're going to type in capital math dot, I'm sorry, cosine. And we're going to copy and paste this expression for both the y and the z rotation parameters. So control C, I'm going to multiply these together and all we need to do is change the x rotation to y and then add another multiplication symbol here control V change the x this time to z and the reason why we're doing this is we want to multiply all of these values between 0 and 1 uh, so that it will return one large value or one main value to tell us uh, whether or not this is pointing towards the camera or away so right now you can see the expression uh, is generating values between basically negative 1 and, and 1. We want to uh, only return positive values so we're going to create a, another function or I'm sorry an expression which is math.abs which will basically turn everything from negative to positive and it, that is exactly what we want so once we bracket this in you'll see that now we're returning values between 0 and 1 which is exactly what we want. Next thing we need to do is to come down to the particle uh, layer and scroll down the fill effect and we're going to alt click the color stopwatch and we're going to pick whip the slider value into the color and once we do that you'll see that magically the color changes based upon the angle to the camera. So we have very dark when the angle is, is parallel or non-existent and then once it comes full onto the camera like it is now um, you get a value of 1. We're going to now go and add a new effect to this effect color correction uh, colorama which is right here and you can see that with the def default um, spectrum it's giving us all kinds of different colors. What we want to do is come to the output cycle here and we want to change this from uh, none to ramp red and now when we scroll through you'll see that when it comes close to the camera or, or perpendicular to the camera it is a bright red or this color and when it is away from the camera it turns to a dark red. Uh, we want to change these settings a little. I want this to go to absolute white and I did the wrong side there, no big deal. And I want to change this to more of a dark red, so the red value about 50. I accidentally got rid of our white. Put the white back in. Move that up closer and I want to add a yellow here to give it kind of a splash of color when it gets close to that highlight and about right here I want to add a bright red gives us a nice gradient and closer down here I really want to add kind of a darker color and pull that a little further around so that you only get the bright spots closer to the actual highlight. So now when we scrub through you can see that it's pretty dark unless you are right on the camera and then you get that bright splash of color which is exactly what we want. Looking good. So if we just quickly go through here you can see the particles rotating and we're getting flashes of highlights when it is uh, perpendicular to the camera. Next thing we want to do is uh, make a new composition and we're going to use the NTSC DV widescreen. We're going to call this glitter. Five seconds is fine. We're going to drag in our uh, shape and we're going to go layer, new, solid. I'm going to call this particles. Make sure it's comp size. And this
this is where we're going to have our particular. So go to Effect, Trap Code, Particular, and this should be familiar to those who watched my previous tutorial. We're going to change a few of these settings. The first thing we're going to change is particles from about 100 to, I'm going to use about 500. And the emitter type from point to box position this time instead of all the way at the bottom we're going to move the emitter all the way up to the top so they're going to fall down this time. Um, the direction we're going to go directional and the rotation this time is going to be negative 90. The velocity will move up to 150 and the emitter size we're going to go 1000 1000 and leave it at 50. Next thing we need to do is take care of the particle. We can turn off the shape particle here, scroll down the particle, change it from sphere to custom, and the layer from none to shape. And now if you scroll through, you'll see all the particles are kind of dropping down. Once again, um, they're all rotating the same because it's all the same sampling, time sampling. I'm going to change the current time to random loop and now as you can see you've got a whole bunch of different particles coming down and uh, their rotation is not uh, uh, choreographed now. Next thing we want to do is um, change the rotational speed make this a little bigger so we can see from 0 to 5 I want to change the size down to 4 and I'm going to now troll down the turbulence. Everything else is fine. Under physics, air, turbulence field. And I'm going to do effect position uh, 20. And the scale, I'm going to bring that up to 30. This will basically make the particles go back and forth a little bit as they fall down. The last thing I'm going to do is change the render mode from full render to full render with depth of field. In order to get the depth of field, we're going to have to create a new camera layer. And 35 millimeter preset is fine. We need to come in here and go to camera options and change a few of these settings. Turn on depth of field. The focus distance I'm going to move to 800. And the aperture I'm going to uh, put up to about 50. One thing I do want to do though is I want to move the particles closer into the camera and get the camera kind of right in the middle of them. So I'm going to go back to my particle layer and I'm going to scroll down and on the Z position which is right here I'm going to make this uh, negative 250 which will bring the particles closer to the camera and as you can see we're getting some nice blurred effects there. Now we really want to make these things sparkle. So we're going to add uh, some new effects. The first effect we're going to do is a stylized glow effect. It's going to be based on the color channels. Um, and we're going to dial up the intensity to 2. And the next thing we want to do is add effect trap code star glow. And as you can see, you're starting to get some bright effects, some shimmery effect, shimmering effects there. I want to turn the streak effect down to 10 and change the settings from uh, current settings to uh, warm star which gives us more of a red look. So let's do a quick RAM preview and see how this looks. And here we go. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, you've got some nice glittering effects going on and changing colors. If you want a different color go back to the shape layer and change your colorama settings to blue or green or whatever colors you want. Uh, the neat thing about the, this method is you're basically unlimited in the uh, the range of color that you can get out of the particles. If you want multiple colors and multiple particles just set up a uh, another particular layer and duplicate everything and set up a, a new uh, particle shape layer and new colorama and there you go you can have all the different colors that you want.
The last thing I might add, like I did in my prior tutorial, is if you really want to kick this up to the next level, uh, you can go to 32-bit um, by coming to the project setting and alt-clicking the 8 to 16, and then if you click it again, you'll go to 32-bit. And what this will do is allow you to go beyond um, an RGB value of 255, 255, and 255, or absolute white. So when you scroll through, you'll actually get highlights which are going to be brighter than 1. Um, you can dial up the glow effect, which is a 32-bit uh, effect, and you'll actually get values in excess of 1, um, which really make it pop a little bit more. So anyway, there you go. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you can put it to good use. Until next time, this is Michael Park for CreativeCow.net.